Society in New Orleans. We're joined today by Zach Sander from the Edgewood Chemical Biological Center. He's working on a new kind of smoke that obscures both visual and thermal detection. Mr. Sander. Thank you, Sophie. So as uh, Sophie alluded, I'm Zach Sander uh, with Edgewood Chemical Biological Center in Edgewood, Maryland. Um, uh, my branch is the Smoke and Target Defeat Branch. Our goal is to develop technologies to obscure light between uh, various armies to protect soldiers, groups of soldiers, vehicles, and the like. We have a small research group there uh, that's focused on developing new smoke technologies to obscure from visible all the way out to, to microwave technologies. Uh, the research that uh, we presented today uh, focuses on uh, a moth-based obscure that we're hoping will be able to block not just in the uh, visible range, but also out into the IR. That would be a, a great advantage to our soldiers. If you can think about uh, technologies that obviously can see through visible, other technologies that are starting to develop that can see through IR, if we can have a single technology um, <clears throat> wrapped up that can can block both of those wavelengths at the same time, be bispectral, uh, it would mean only having to carry one obscure rather than having to carry an obscure for, for each of those technologies. Thank you. Are there any questions? And if so, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Yes, ma'am. So it's Kath Otis is from Chemistry and Industry Magazine. Uh, did I, I'm not sure if I misheard you when you said a moth-based obscurant. Did you say moth? Uh, moth, M-O-F, so oh. metal, metal oxide framework. Right, so the, the basis of that technology, um, it, it was actually an interesting story. We have another collaborator at Edgewood that works a lot with these moth technologies. They had given us a sample. Um, one of our collaborators, who actually was a, on this project, picked up the sample and said, what is this? Can I blow it up? Because she's in the pyrotechnics and experience, uh, pyrotechnics and, and explosives branch. And when we started thinking about it, we realized that that moth that she had picked up is made up of terephthalic acid ligands. And those ligands, uh, terephthalic acid happens to be one of the uh, primary components of the visible obscurant that um, is being developed. So we started thinking, wow, there's some, some overlap here in this technology and the, the existing technologies. Um, and moth's got some other uh, nice characteristics in that it's got a pore structure that will allow you to have other things in its space be able to pack more densely and uh, be able to, to do more. Is it that puff of uh, the moth and, and these things is in the atmosphere? I mean, is that, um, what about safety? Um, are these things safely inhaled or? Well, the existing, the hope is obviously to develop a technology that's safer than, than the current ones. Uh, the current fielded um, visible obscuring uh, hexachloroethane is not the best. Um, some of the ones that we're developing, including uh, the terephthalic acid and titanium dioxide, have, have lower uh, toxicity issues than existing. And can you just explain how it works? What's the function of the moth, and how does this get achieved this bispectral? Sure. So this technology, the way that we're working on it, is actually as there's a couple different ways that you can. You know, Employ uh, obscurance. You can actually use like a pneumatic method where you suck it through a vacuum and spray it out. Um, you can do an explosive dissemination. This one is a pyrotechnic uh, method where you actually burn it. And the hope was that we would be able to burn this moth at a high enough temperature to liberate the terephthalic acid. There's also zirconium uh, nodes in this structure and we were hoping that they would provide some basis for uh, the IR blocking. We found that actually we ended up getting a, a fair uh, obs obscuration in the visible and also got some obscuration in the UV, which was a little bit of a surprise. Still bispectral, um, maybe we can tweak the technology to be tri-spectral or multi-spectral. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So this is all being tested in the lab at the moment, is it? Correct, yeah. So we have um, all the way from bench top to a large chamber, um, something like eight meters wide, 10 meters tall chamber where outfitted with um, sensors from UV through IR. And we've done some testing in that chamber. We haven't done any field testing on this yet. Thank you. Christopher and Zodiata from Science Friday. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what's different about different types of smoke that you were trying to create? Because when I think smoke, I just think, yeah, it's you know, the smoke that I've seen from a barbecue or something. Absolutely. So um, in the lab, we're trying to do more nano-based technologies, um, particles that maybe have a resonance frequency that will absorb light at a given frequency. So we, we do things like um, make plasmonic particles um, of a given size and shape, and that size and shape dictates what wavelength of light it's going to absorb best at. Uh, we've got a lot of collaborations with universities and um, other government partners to look at flakes, look at um, rods, look at functionalized rods. We've done things with uh, titanium dioxide, which is a, a fairly good visible obscure. Um, we've started functionalizing that in, placing silver particles on the outside of that to try and increase the conductivity and also improve its uh, range in the IR. And how much of your job is blowing things up and how much is doing calculations with chemistry? I wish that it was more than blowing things up, that's, that's a fun part of it. Um, we do a lot of lab work and also the, you know, the general researcher and looking at papers and seeing who else is doing what in the Uh, hi, Kat from Chemistry World Magazine. Um, so you said you have some obscurities which are based on titanium uh, dioxide, which is nice and white. So what does that smoke screen, uh, the morph based one, actually look like? Is it white as well? Is it black? Yeah, so it's also a white smoke. Um, when, when we've tried it out in the chamber, we got a white smoke out of it, which was good. Um, the type the terephthalic acid burning away. Right. And um, what kind of, like, um, kind of amounts do you need to use, like, you obviously probably want a certain depth of, like, this fork to kind of obscure, you know, a certain range of visible. Yeah, so, so we look at the um, extinction coefficient, which is basically how many meters squared of space does it block per gram of material? Is that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what, what is it like in, in the comparison with what, uh, what, what you said earlier, the, the one that's currently used? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's still immature. Uh, this was a, a small seedling effort, uh, proof of concept, and we did get some, some measurable results, <laughs> but not an order of magnitude better than what's existing, um, on par with what's existing. Thank you. Question in the back. Katie Cottingham from the American Chemical Society. So I was just wondering, when is this going to be available, do you think, for soldiers to actually use? That's a really great question. <laughs> uh, funding and other sources available to, to advance the technology. The life cycle is long in the, in the government. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot that needs to be done from the engineering standpoint, device management standpoint, I, I really can't fathom a guess as to how long it could actually take to field. Any further questions? Katie Cunningham again. Um, so I'm just wondering how how heavy is this obscure versus what's currently out there? Is there some sort of weight difference, weight advantage? Mm. Yeah, so it's not as dense, um, which means that you can get more of it to float. We're, we're hoping that we'd be able to, to be able to keep it aloft more. So that there's a couple other factors besides just um, extinction coefficient things like yield. How well can you get it out of the, uh, out of a device when it you know is liberated? So we're hoping that that improvement will will show over time as well.
pay what this way you see this. Uh, is there some infinite reflection involved in this, uh, in this thing, like essentially practical usage of, of reflecting uh, uh, back into space or reflecting at your source or something of that sort? You know, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's understandable you quite want to mask like, uh, things either by hiding or, or by, uh, by, you know, making them invisible. But make, let's get practical, like, like use it to, to reduce insulation or, or, or uh, insulation, I, 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 uh, or, or something where, where you prevent getting, uh, getting heat into a building. Is there some, some use like that? Um, I don't know if this particular technology would be the best in terms of scattering. There are certainly other ones that are designed to do that. Um, and we, we rely on those fields, those researchers, to kind of help us along our path in terms of what might work as well as an obscure. It's probably something that's very highly reflective as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, uh, the, the moth you, you said you uh, blow it up or you burn it, does it actually get uh, dissimilated and destroyed in the process? Or so the floating particles you have, is it like zinc and carbonic acid or is it the form of Zir Zirconium and, and terephthalic oh, acid. Zirconium. Yeah, so that's part of what we're working on is actually the pyrotechnic mix to be able to burn it at a sufficient temperature to liberate the terephthalic acid from the framework. Yeah. So no, it doesn't continue to exist afterwards after it's been broken down. So why do you, do you need to start off with the moth? I can't just use the individual ingredients. Uh, we, we think there might be an advantage in terms of being able to pack other things into the interstitial, interstitial spaces. Okay. Do you have any ideas that could be? Yeah, uh, metals. We're thinking various metals that are also IR. Any further questions? All right, well, thank you very much. The archive version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live underscore NOAA. Please join us for our next press conference at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you.